so Black Lives Matter protested um, over the weekend in Maine, um, but what it exposed was something completely different than what they expected that they would expose. In the coverage of Black Lives Matter um, protests, the local papers omitted something that I think is key. They covered the rally, they covered sort of the messages that the local um, um, organizers of the Black Lives Matter wanted to cover. They covered that it's an inclusive organization. They're trying to change so that they're more inclusive. They're not just um, sort of a, a counter organization to um, some white supremacist organizations. They talked about how they want, um, you know, a new president. They want, um, they don't want fascism and um, they want, um, you know, uh, for society to become more fair and more equal um, so that everybody is treated the same so you don't have situations and then of course the article, the article brings up um, um, here in this in this paragraph in the past similar gatherings in, in Maine's largest city have focused on the killings of police by uh, black Americans such as George Floyd in Minneapolis and Breonna Taylor and and um, um, Louisville, Kentucky. Their names were mentioned again at Thursday's rally in speeches and chants, but the tone of the event was slightly different with just days left before the November 3 election. So it was more like a political organization. And if the media would have um, focused on, on that as well, it would have uh, um, it would have not exposed so much of what I'm about to tell you. But what Oh, oh, before I go into that, at the end of this article, it talks about, um, here is it, uh, uh, this, this article here says, Hamadi Ahmed, one of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter in Maine, thanked the crowd for coming and urged them to keep repeating the names um, of those black citizens who have been killed by police. She said their names can never be forgotten. Um, if change is to take place. And Ahmed, without mentioning her choice for president, urged everyone to vote November 3rd. So um, this right here is where I realized what this rally really exposed. And it was the way that the media covered the rally. Um, let's talk about Hamada Ahmed, and I'm not going to talk about her in a negative way. I don't think negative of her, although I'm not a big fan of the Black Lives Matter movement for different reasons. But I want to talk about her for one second. So here is Humida Ali, or Ahmed, um, um, standing, talking with the mayor of Portland, and I want you to focus on the woman in the middle. The woman in the middle is... Um, um, Humida Ahmed's mother, uh, Mumina Ali, a Somali immigrant who came to the United States. And this, her mother, is her motivation for becoming a leader of the, Mac, of the Black Lives Matter because her mother was senselessly beaten by the Portland Police Department, put in a chokehold, they beat her so bad that they chipped her tooth and put her in the hospital. Two Portland police officers. Why was Mumina Ali not mentioned in the article? That's my question. Why? And I'm going to theorize here. I'm going to speculate here a little bit. When it comes to Maine, the state of Maine, newspaper organizations writing articles, they always cover for the police. You see it over and over again. Sometimes the police do something so hideously wrong, like two Rockland police officers recently beat um, 11 porcupines to death, or um, um, they just beat them to death with their police issue batons, um, and the newspapers had to cover that because it was such a sensational story. And when they cover stories like that, they don't get retaliated against. But if they mention Mumina Ali in this article about Black Lives Matter, when I guarantee you Mumina Ali was a focal point of the rally this weekend that Black Lives Matter did, because what happened to her is almost identical to what happened to George Floyd in Minneapolis. 
basically the story is that um, one of Mumina Ali's daughters went missing. So she walked around or she drove around Portland looking for her, figured out at one point that she was in the hospital. So Mumina Ali goes to the hospital to check on her daughter, but because she doesn't speak English that well and there's a language barrier, um, the police officer that, that was on a detail um, uh, requested an interpreter to understand what was going on. The interpreter took too long. The mother was getting a little more frustrated. The police officer was getting more frustrated. And then, for no reason, out of nowhere, he basically body slams Amina Ali, puts her in handcuffs, throws her to the floor. Um, she chips her tooth, smashes her face, and she starts yelling out in pain. He misinterprets that. He gets on her back, puts her in a chokehold, and causes... Um, her to almost pass out. Um, she is injured, clearly having a medical issue. And so the medical staff come out, rush her back into the hospital, put her in a special room and give her treatment. Now, that officer clearly messed up. Though, I think there were two officers actually. They clearly needed to be punished. But when um, um, Humida Ahmed, and I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. I'm sorry if I'm not. I do apologize. It's not intentional. Um, uh, and her mother file a um, internal affairs complaint with the Portland Police Department. And internal affairs in local police departments or smaller police departments like the Portland um, ultimately are managed by the chief of the police, who was then at the time Michael Soschuk. But Michael Soschuk is now commissioner of police for the state of Maine, a politically appointed position that he was appointed to by Governor Janet Mills, which makes him one of the most powerful police officers in the state of Maine currently. He can retaliate against anybody he wants to. He's done it multiple times. Um, in fact, there is a person living in Maine, Charlotte Isserbite, who is the, um, she was an official with the President Ronald Reagan administration in the Department of Education, very well-respected woman. She claims, and um, I'm, I want to emphasize that she claims, that Michael Soschuk attempted to murder her son two times through proxies um, for basically the crime of his son accidentally called Michael Sostruck's wife. That is explosive, but that is what she claims, and she's a highly credible person. Um, there are other people that claim Michael Sostruck retaliated against them. I have detailed their stories on my YouTube channel. I've done like three or four videos on specifically on Michael Sostruck and how he's covered up police corruption. Two of his officers handcuffed a suspect to active railroad tracks to try to elicit a confession out of them. Active railroad tracks. They were handcuffed to it. That is torture. Any confession that resulted from that should be thrown out immediately, and those officers should be thrown out immediately for doing it. Michael Sostruck covered that up. And... When Momina Ali, this woman here in the picture, and her daughter, Humina Ahmed, um, filed an internal affairs complaint about the treatment that Momina was given at the hands of Portland police, Michael Soschuk covered it up. And it only took the George Floyd incident and a mounting political pressure to reopen her case, which is what has happened right now. The Portland Police Department have reopened that internal affairs investigation. They're looking into it, and I predict they're going to come to the same conclusion. They're going to cover it up, tell, probably, you know, slap the police officer on the back and give him an award and promote him to lieutenant, because that seems to be the pattern. But for this story not to be mentioned in that article, that's the real story here. The Black Lives Matter is an important movement. Uh, I don't know if the Black Lives Matter organization um, should be given that same credit, but the movement itself is a genuine movement for equality. Um, the organization is a 
in my opinion, a racist black supremacist organization that wants to do away with the United States and its current structure and form some communist socialist utopia. I'm, I'm against that. Um, but um, when it comes to wanting, um, you know, more equality, less racism, so that everybody is the same, I totally support that. But what I don't support is newspapers that cover up for the police commissioner of the state of Maine. Because I guarantee Mumina Ali's story was a prominent focus of the rally this week. And of course, you know it was a focus because her daughter was the organizer of the rally. Do you think the organizer of the rally is not going to talk about what motivated her to become part of active in the Black Lives Matter movement? Do you really think that that's possible? But the Portland Press Herald, the largest or second largest newspaper in the state of Maine, I know Bangor Daily News is another big paper, uh, to omit the local scandal that is plaguing Portland that is identical to what happened to George Floyd for them to admit it, omit it from their article, is the real story here. You know, we hear the term fake news all the time. Fake news can be a news story where you omit something that is super important. Like you say, um, I don't know, just I'll make up a story, you know. Uh, a news, a news uh, personality comes on and says, today... Uh, justice was was served for um, a victim of a crime that uh, uh, and um, and she feels vindicated that now her um, perpetrator is going um, uh, to be punished but they omit a key part of the story that the crime was done by the governor of the state of Maine or the president of the United States or some very famous politician. They omit that because they're protecting that person. So they tell the story without telling the most important part of the story. And that's what happened here this weekend in Maine. We have a Black Lives Matter um, protest. We have a very generic Black Lives Matter article written by the Portland Press Herald. And I noticed other articles on the movement were the same, where they generically talk about, you know, the movement. They generically talk about um, cases that are acceptable now to talk about, like George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. They talk about, you know, the chance they were given. They mention a few things, you know, we need to vote on November 3rd and we need to, you know, get Trump out of office. Turn it into a little bit of a political thing because of obviously Portland Press Herald leans left and they don't want Trump in anymore. Um, so they just do a completely generic article and they leave out what would really help the citizens of Maine to get justice for Momina Ali, who was senselessly beaten, put in a chokehold, almost killed by two Portland police officers. And that was covered up by Chief Michael Soschuk, the most powerful police officer in the state of Maine. And the motivation, the reason that this newspaper covered it up, that this author, Dennis Hoey, covered it up and didn't include that in the article, is because the editors at the Portland Press Herald know of Michael Soschuk's reputation and the police in Maine's reputation for retaliation if they go against what the police want. I myself am a victim of this retaliation. I was critical of the Maine State Police over the shooting and killing of a young woman who was a passenger in a vehicle in Vassalboro, Maine. I p posted my criticism on social media. They retaliated against me. When I applied for a professional license in Maine, they denied it. They didn't deny it because I wasn't qualified for the license. They didn't deny it because I don't have the background or the 
um, history to get that license. They didn't deny it because I have criminal offenses or I have done things wrong or I'm unethical. They denied it because I was critical of them on social media. And they had the conads to put in the denial letter that my social media posts were the reason that my license, my professional license was being denied. Think about that. They are so comfortable. They are so comfortable in their corruption. They don't even try to hide it anymore. The reason why that is, is because there's no accountability in Maine. There's no citizen oversight committee that you can complain to. All you can do is complain to the police, let them investigate themselves, and then have them determine that they did nothing wrong. That's your only, that's your only way. You either, you either complain to internal affairs at the local police department, or I mean that the, their, their officer, their internal affairs officer, or you go to the criminal justice academy and complain to their um, review board. But they're all police officers, so you're complaining to the police. There's no citizen oversight committee. There's no way to hold police accountable in Maine. And because of that, police in Maine know that they can get away with pretty much anything they want. Unless it rises to the, play, to the point where they start beating porcupines with their police-issued batons. Then that obviously would warrant them getting fired. Or um, if they become a drug and cocaine dealer and then beat their wives, like a um, story that I covered. Or um, they start molesting a, I think it was a six-year-old or an eight-year-old. Uh, just the fact I mentioned that just now probably is going to make sure that this video is demonetized, but that was done by the former chief of the Maine State Police. <laughs> that poor little girl covered up for years and years and years only when it boiled over and they couldn't contain and they couldn't put a keep a lid on that story did finally he get punished and you know what his punishment was for ruining that girl's life for the rest of her life i think it was four years in prison four years four years in prison for ruining a girl's life for the rest of her life how many more people, how many other people did he ruin? And because of journalistic malpractice in the state of Maine, and that's what this article is, it's journalistic malpractice. And I could go through and spend all day showing you journalistic malpractice in the state of Maine over and over again. I've seen it throughout my entire life where you see an article and you see it's written very generically. And the juicy details that specifically relate to the state of Maine are omitted. This is a huge omission. Leaving Momina Ali's name out of this article is a massive omission. And it's unacceptable. It's journalistic malpractice. What happened to Momina Ali is the reason why the organizer of this event became involved in the organization of Black Lives Matter. But the journalists omit it. And that's the story here. Make no mistake, that's the story. Portland Press Herald is guilty of fake news. They write this generic story and they omit the most important part of the story and they did it to protect Michael Soschuk and the police community in the state of Maine because they know if they don't do it they're going to get retaliated against let me know what you think of this article this um, video that I've made um, let me know your thoughts on it I'm not saying one way or the other whether Black Lives Matter movement or this organization was good or bad. But I'm telling you the real story here. I'm telling you the story within the story. And I want to know your thoughts. Please, please let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video. I really appreciate 
anything that you do to help. Thank you.